Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to my very first Strixhaven draft. That's right, the set is finally out, and I'm really excited to dive in. But before I do, I want to remind you that if you enjoy the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment in the comment section down below with your questions, thoughts, and feedback, and click that bell icon so you get notified when I post future videos. If you'd like to support my content directly, you can do so via the Patreon, patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. Okie doke. So we're going to be reading through the cards. And uh, yeah, starting things off, we have a lesson teaching of the archaics. Um, it's a decent lesson, but it's not like game breaking or anything like that. It's just quite like, it's relatively situational, but it's powerful in the situations it's good in. So it's a good lesson, but I don't think we're going to be first picking it. Torrent Sculptor is quite good. Four mana, two, two. And it can be much bigger than that if you have some instants or sorceries in your graveyard. Um, and then Flamethrower Sonata is a nice removal spell if you have some instants and sorceries running around. Divine Gambit is our um, Mystical Archive. That card's not particularly great compared to some of the other things we're working with. In the common slot, the card I'm most excited about, maybe Star Pupil, Rise of Extus. Practical Research is a pretty good card draw spell. I think I'm just going to take the Torrent Sculptor, though, starting off with a blue-red card. I think it's better than Teaching of the Archaics and may, probably a little bit better than Practical Research, though I do like Practical Research. But we'll start off with the rare. I think it's quite quite nice. The flexibility is really good. Okay, so we've started off with a blue-red card, but this can also just be a blue card if you just want to be putting it into blue-green. Uh, so we aren't going to be completely, like, forced into anything in particular. One thing I will say about these sets is since there's only five archetypes that are viable, it's... Uh, pretty reasonable to just take gold cards highly. So like this can be a blue card or a blue red card or just a, even just a red card if you want, but uh, which leaves a lot of flexibility. But I think Quandrix Cultivator is a good card. I like Karok Wrangler. They're both quite good. Karok Wrangler um, could leave me in blue green. There's not a red green deck, um, but they're both blue green cards essentially, given the card that I first picked. This could also go into green black technically. I do like the Cultivator though, and it's a little bit cheaper. So I think I'm going to lean towards that. I do like the Campus as well. I think it's between these two cards, though. Um, the Pledge Mage does go well with the Wrangler. I will also say that. And then after those two cards, maybe I'd take the Campus, maybe the Pledge Mage itself. I don't think I'm really in the market for Grinning Ignis yet, but I'll take the Cultivator. There's a nice value card. When in doubt, I take the cheaper card. And I also like the fact that this can ramp me up to something potentially big. Okay. And now there is a Mage Duel, which is a really good card. It works well with some of the uh, like cheap instants and sorceries available in blue-green. Uh, Opt is not a card I'm going to be taking, though it could have a home if you have some Magecraft stuff. I think Mage Duel and Field Trip are some of the best green commons, so maybe a signal there. There's also Eureka Moment, which is another good card, but I think Mage Duel is quite good. Maybe we can wheel Serpentine Curve. Overall, off to a good start. I think one of the benefits of this card that I didn't highlight at first is its flexibility, because you can just play it um, as a, like, red card if you really need to, uh, or a blue card if you're trying to play, like, blue-green. So I can just play the Torrent Sculptor half in my deck, and it'll still be good if I have cards like Eureka Moment. Um, you round up, so, like, d getting rid of a Mage Duel or a Field Trip from my graveyard can also make this a 4-4. And 4-4, the tar to target is pretty nice for 4 mana, but pretty nice Mage Duel here, I think. After that, I would take, I think, Field Trip and then Eureka Moment, but that's close. Okay, moving on to pick three. There's another, pick four, I mean, there's another Mage Duel, which I do like. I'm going to hover that for now. I think Mage Duel is quite good, and it's important for green-blue in particular, because green-blue lacks removal a lot of the time. There's also a Quandrix Pledge Mage, which works really well with Mage Duel, so maybe we can wheel the first one or get some of those going in some way. Um, I also like that it combos well with Torrent Sculptor, I can even like cast this for cheap with other things. I like Field Trip as well. I already have a little bit of ramp, and I don't have anything to ramp into yet. So I think I like Mage Duel, followed by maybe Field Trip or Burrogba Fuddler. Probably the Field Trip. I'm looking more like a big mana deck than a Tempo Aggro deck, which Burrogba Fuddler fits better in. This card, I think, is much better in Black-Green than Blue-Green, where you have more disposable bodies. Snakeskin Veil could be okay, and then Pledge Mage is solid. But we're just going to keep taking Mage Duels. Okay, so now there's another interesting pick. Frost Trickster is fantastic, so I'm probably going to just take that. Um, I also really like Overgrown Arch. I think these cards are both quite good. Um, 
I guess with two mage duels, I could also just go towards black green, but I haven't seen a ton of black. I guess there's an unwilling ingredient and a moldering Karok. Um, but I think Frost Trickster is just so powerful that it's worth taking here. There's also Quandrix Campus, which I love as a card. Uh, and Overgrown Arch is quite good as well. Helps you like gain life and things like that. And uh, you can then sacrifice it to learn if you get some good lessons in your sideboard. But I think I'm going to take the Frost Trickster. That's a nice pickup. Okay, next we see... So there's a couple blue cards here. There is no great green card. There is a Witherbloom Campus, if I was looking to splash at some point. There's also just Waterfall Aerialist, which is a card that I do like as an aggressive card. It doesn't look like I'm really a tempo-y version, and I do already have a couple of 4-drops. But Fr Frost Trickster into Waterfall Aerialist can be good. Vortex Runner can also be solid. The Campus is reasonable if I do end up wanting to splash, but I don't think I want to at the moment. So I think it's between the Aerialist and the Vortex Runner. I'll take the Aerialist. I think it's a more powerful card. Even though it costs a little bit more mana. And now we get a Quandrix Campus. That's incredible. You'll love to see it. Um, there is a Moldering Karak, which is a reasonable card, Silver Quill Pledge Mage, and Lorehold Pledge Mage. All those are pretty reasonable, but I like getting the Campus. I'm going to play like almost as many, like I'll play a decent number of these in my deck, and they do help me cast my spells. I don't have any cheap spells at the moment, but Blue Green, that's one of the strengths of Blue Green, in my opinion, is that it does have a decent amount of cheap good plays. Overgrown Arch maybe helps me fuel towards a more late game approach. Uh, I currently have. I could also try to splash red so that I can cast the back half of Torrent Sculptor, so I can keep that in mind. But I like Overgrown Arch, especially if I go towards a more rampy finish, like Overgrown Arch, Quandrix Cultivator. I think the uh, the Aerialist maybe doesn't work as well in that version of the deck, and the 2-3 might be better, but I'm totally okay with the pick still. And Overgrown Arch is a nice pickup for the deck. And now Practical Research could be a card I take. Um, I could also take Witherbloom Campus and potentially splash black with that position. But Practical Research could be a good supplement to my Torrent Sculptor type plan. Witherbloom Campus. We still haven't seen a ton of, like, individually great black cards, I don't think. So I think I'm okay taking Practical Research here, putting it in the sideboard. Another Quandrix Campus. I'll take that over Curate. I like just getting the campus so I can have something to do in the late game with my extra mana. And Scurred Colony or Field Trip. I'm going to take Field Trip. I think Field Trip is more powerful than Scurred Colony. I do not have any two drops really. I have one two drop. But I think Field Trip is just the more powerful card and having some ramp is nice. And it does incentivize me to get a learn card or two for my sideboard. Um, but I think Field Trip is overall just very powerful. So there is a Bayou Groff. But I don't have anything cheap to sack to it. I'll just take the Burrog Befuddler as a cheap 2-drop. I mean, cheap 2-drop. All 2-drops cost the same. But I think it's, this is like a 5-drop in my deck, and this is actually a 2-drop. And this is not really one of the better lessons. Sure, I'll take Moldering Karok, I guess. Over And eh, maybe Ingredient's better, because if I do shift towards Black-Green, I'd rather have that, maybe. But this does work well with the Mage Duels. Okay, so we'll just take the Archive card and Archivist. So we're in a pretty good spot, I'd say. Okay, so we've opened up this card. I don't think the Uvilda part is very good, so I'm not really over the moon about that part. Nasari is quite good, but we aren't really a uh, red deck here. Igneous Inspiration's good. I like Elemental Summonings because it can turn my... Um, like field trips into a 4-4, which is a reasonable body. But I think I'm just going to keep snapping up mage duels. I don't have a ton of creatures at the moment. I only have... Oh, actually, I actually have six creatures. Wait, what? No. Six creatures. What? Oh. Oh, I guess I have all creatures other than my uh, couple of mage duels, but I'm still pretty happy to get another mage duel. Again, blue-green doesn't get removal. This is the only removal spell blue-green gets, other than some uncommon fight spells in green as well. So I'm just going to take this. I think Zephyr Boots is also fine for this sort of deck. Maybe I can wheel Leyline Invocation. We didn't pass much good blue-green in the first pack, so I'm optimistic for this pack. 
Ooh, this is a really good card. This is also really good. Another fight spell, but it can also be a counter spell, and it's only two mana, so it's cheap. We can maybe wheel the campus or needle thorn drake, which is really good. Fractal summoning would also be a really good lesson to get. But I'm just going to prioritize the decisive denial. Just a very powerful card. We're quandrixing it up. I think I go decisive denial followed by fractal summoning, just so I have at least one good lesson to go get with my overgrown arch and field trip, and then needle thorn and then campus because I already do have two campuses. Camp I, campus, campus E. Here I'm going to take elemental summoning. I think that it's just important to have a couple of good lessons, and this is the fact that it's double blue is not a huge deal because by the time I'm on turn five, I'll probably have that. And turning my like field trip into also getting a four four is awesome. And if I do find a way to splash, it'll be even it'll be still be reasonable to cast. I think Soothsayer Adept gets a little bit worse in this set because there is a decent amount of ways to spend mana and you've got learn cards to cast the spells with. So I don't prioritize this as much. We're seeing another practical research. So it's looking like maybe blue-red was open, but we didn't see as many of the blue-red cards. Um, I also kind of like expensive things so that they work with my Torrent Sculptor. Okay, and now there is Needlethorn Drake. Skurrid Colony, and Prismari Campus. Prismari Campus would just help cast the Flamethrower Sonata apart, and I already have a couple tap lands, so this is a pretty easy Needlethorn Drake for me. I think it's better than Skurrid Colony. There's not a ton of ways to punish X1s. Um, it works decently well with the fight spell still, because if you're fighting something small, it'll still win. And Skurrid Colony, sure, I have a couple of ramp. I've got this and Quandrix, but I'm still just happy to get a card that's going to trade with whatever they throw at me. After that, I think I would take Scurried Colony, and then I think I'd take Prismari Campus over Witherbloom Pledge Mage. I think this Pledge Mage is pretty reasonable as well, so maybe I could see an argument for that. Okay. Well, there is a Cultivate in this pack, which is, I think, better than Field Trip a lot of the time, because you don't have to, like, cast an, a clunky sideboard card, which that is a sideboard card. I do like Charge Through with Mage Duel in particular. I think Cultivate works quite nicely in this deck. I think it's a little bit better than Field Trip, as I was saying. It also can help me Splash if I really want to do that. Maybe it's not better than Field Trip. But I don't really have a ton of good lessons. I think Charge Through is also good. Maybe Field Trip is just better than Cultivate. Because I have more options with it. Especially if I get some lessons. Ooh, another Mage Duel. Sign me up. I can even double Mage Duel. I think Field Trip versus Cultivate's interesting. They both get me two cards if I have some lessons. I only have one lesson so far, um, but I can hopefully get some more. And I want to try out the new card rather than play with Cultivate. Also, I'm not really looking to splash here. Mage Duel again is nice. I'm getting high on non-creatures, but still pretty optimistic here. Okay. So, there is a couple of really good Quandrix cards. There's also another Quand... I mean, a couple of really good uh, Prismari cards. There's a Bayou Groff, there's a Waterfall Aerialist, and a Quandrix Campus. I have 14 playables. My deck seems relatively open. I can just probably snap up another Campus here. Because that'll be a good way to use my extra mana for my field trips. I do have three 4-drops already. Sure, I'll take another Needlethorn Drake. I don't want to fall too far behind, as I said. Fortifying Drought is also pretty nice. There's a combat trick, but I don't really need combat tricks as much. Just getting another good two-drop is good. I could just take the Explosive Welcome in case I need to splash. I do have two field trips and the Cultivator to help me ramp. And I don't think I really need Curate. I already kind of am a bit high on non-creature spells. So we'll just take that in case we need it. There's another Quandrix Campus. I don't think I want to take Pop Quiz because I only have one good lesson in the sideboard. And I already have one, two, three learn cards, so I don't really need the Pop Quiz. And Campus is fine. The fourth Campus does get like a little bit of diminishing returns, I will say, though, because having ta tap lands is not the best, but still it's reasonable. Push Campus, maybe we'll want to splash red, as I was saying. 
Elemental summoning coming back is huge. Also, hunt for specimens is really good. But another elemental summoning is great because now I have three good learn cards and two good sideboard five mana five, four fours. Another Prismari campus, nice. And Ruth, the last pick. So now maybe I wish I had taken the field the cultivate over the field trip. But we're still in okay shape. We can maybe splash red. We have the two elemental summonings. We splash red for explosive welcome or practical research or something like that. That could be okay. Sedgemore, which is really good, but I'm not really close to splashing that. We could get environmental sciences, and then all of our field trips can also fetch up a, a mountain if we have that. So I think I want to take that, and that can like really facilitate a, a splash here. Um, I think I'm okay giving up on a Professor of Zoomancy, even though I think that card's really good. I also think Burian Books is really good, but environmental sciences fits really well with my plan of splashing red. I only really need one of it, too. But I don't think I'm going to get it later. Oh, baby. Mind's Desire. That's kind of funny. That's a really cool card. I think I'm just going to take the Biomathematician, though. Just a really efficient body. Creates a fractal for me. I have enough lessons now. I've got the Environmental Sciences and the two Elemental Summonings, which is perfect. And then I can splash my red cards now, probably. I'm probably not going to splash Rutha, but I can splash this Welcome and this Practical Research. Give me some extra power in the late game, which I think I might need. Wow, this is a really good pack, too. There's a Divide by Zero, which I really like. There's also a Kelpie Guide. And there's another Mage Duel. I don't think I need a fifth Mage Duel. I think I'd rather have a creature here. Divide by zero is another interactive spell. Pest summoning is a good lesson as well. Hmm. Kelpie guide is definitely reasonable, but I already have a lot of ramp. Maybe I do want divide by zero. It seems quite powerful. And it works well with my practical research plans, I guess. Kelpie guide. I do like it, but I think the divide by zero is a little bit more powerful baseline. I don't know close there. Negate, not really interested. Snow day is good. Eureka moment is good. I think Eureka moment versus snow day is interesting. If I was a more aggressive deck than snow day, I could see being like better. Eureka moment's nice for ramping and drawing cards. Hmm. I think I'll take Snow Day. I just want some more expensive stuff. Hmm. And now Professor of Zoomancy. There's also a Introduction to Prophecy. But I think I just want some beefier cards. I do have a few two drops. I think Zephyr Boots could be good in my deck as well. But I don't have a ton of creatures, so I don't really want an equipment. And I think Zoomancy just gives me a great card to use my Mage Duel with. Fractal Summoning could be the perfect card for this deck. I don't think we need a second Practical Research. But Fractal Summoning gives me another Learn card I have. One, two, three Learn cards, and... I mean, three lessons and one, two, three, three ways to learn. So this is a good, nice, some flex, nice flexibility. There's also a biomathematician. I guess I just, I already have enough lessons to cast all of them. So I guess I just take biomathematician. And now there is emergent sequence or cultivate. I think I'm going to play one mountain. So I think I would rather have the sequence because I can cast it on turn two. <sighs> That's a big pickup for me. Wow. I don't think this card is playable by a lot of decks, but in my deck it's actually really key, because I have a lot of ramp here. I've got two field trips. I got a Quandrix Cultivator. Got this Emergent Sequence, and now I've got a big payoff card that I can actually cast and bring back over and over. That's big. That is big. Oh, and this guy came back. Zoomancy hype. 
Snakeskin Veil is reasonable for sure. But I think the Zoomancy is just more important. I don't mind Burry in books either, but I have a lot of Mage Duels, so I just want bigger, beefy creatures. Oh, and we get the Burian books. We could also take Charge Through. I don't think we want the Zephyr Boots, again, because we're just a little bit light on creatures, relatively speaking. I think Burian books is reasonable, though. Charge Through is also reasonable because it combines so well with Mage Duel. I'm just going to take Burian books. And we got the Kelpie Guide back. That's huge. That card's really good. Pest Summoning is also great. I'm going to take the Kelpie Guide. Archivist or Tangle Trap. I guess I'll take the Archivist. Ooh, we got the Introduction to Prophecy back. Nice. And Practical Research came back. Cool. <sighs> Overall, this deck is looking quite good to me. So I guess we'll have to decide what we want to cut here. So we're going to keep all these lessons in the sideboard. So we're going to keep the Summoning, the Sciences, and the Prophecies in the sideboard. We do have access to a Rutha if we want it. Rutha's pretty good, but I don't think we want to be able... We aren't going to be able to cast it as early in the game. So we're going to cut those two, and we're just going to add two forests for now. But we will keep this in mind. Um, so we have one, two, three, four lessons. And how many... And I don't think we want big play in this deck, really. So how many learn cards do we have? We have one, two... Three, four. Four learn cards and four lessons, so it's perfect. So we'll never have to not get a lesson if we don't want one. We might not want this one as often, but I think we're pretty good because we're not going to necessarily draw all of them anyway. Um, so this is 14, 15, 16. So this is 6, 13, 14, 17 lands. I think 17 lands is fine because we do have like ramp to go get more lands. So that means we're probably not going to flood out as... I mean, we're not going to get mana screwed as often, and our deck is relatively cheap. Um, Explosive Welcome is a very expensive card. It could win us the game, though. And we uh, maybe we do want 18 lands, because we do have all of these. So let's just add an extra forest for now. Because we do have so many scry lands. Okay. So what's the initial thoughts? Needle Thorn Drake is a great defensive body. Good fight spell, good defensive card, good ramp. I don't think we're a Baragba Fuddler deck. This card works best when you like attack in with your 2-2 and they block with their 2-2. So I don't think we want that. We have enough 2-drops, just, just just barely. We have 4 2-drops that we're pretty happy to cast on turn 2. Um, and that's like just enough. And then we can even hold up that sometimes. Mage Duel, looking like a reasonable card. We, I really want to try this out, so we'll see how it does. Frost Trickster seems like just a generically great card. Biomathematician seems good. This Torrent Sculptor. I don't know what the heck the is going on with that. The cards are just all skewy. Jeez Louise. Um, it doesn't happen if I do this. It does. Um, well, that's going to make things tough. Um... I guess we can make some cuts anyway. I'm going to cut the Waterfall Aerialist. If this is the 4-mana 3-1 that has Ward 2. I'm just not that aggressive of a deck. Okay, I'm going to have to restart. I will try to build this deck when I come back. Okay, I'm back. Luckily, I didn't have to restart Arena. I just had to close the thing and reopen it. So I've got my four learn cards for my four... My four lessons for my four learn cards. I cut the Waterfall Aerialist and the Burrock Befuddler so far. Um, I could see cutting one practical research. I don't want to deck myself after all. And it is a splash card. But I do think it's worth running a copy. I have pretty good mana to fix for it. Um, and it also lets me cast Torrent Sculptor if I need to. Sometimes, like the red mana does. The Flamethrower Sonata part. So that's good. Burian books should be reasonable. Snow Day. I think that's a good card. I want to try it out at least. Explosive Welcome might not be necessary now that I have this bookworm. But I do have a decent amount of ramp, so I'm wondering how good that's going to be. 
I could cut Frost Trickster because that's not really a card that my deck needs. A three mana two two flyer. It's not particularly great on. I mean, it does tap down their guy for a turn, so that's like a nice defensive play on its own. Maybe I don't need the practical research. Maybe I just want to play straight blue green now that I have this bookworm. And that lowers my curve a decent amount too because I've gotten rid of some expensive cards. Hmm. And these are like five drops as well, so keep that in mind. So having blue is important. Okay, so I could just play straight blue-green. I think 17 lands would be reasonable in that case, because I do have some ramp and stuff. And maybe I would want to get this guy in, but I have some big stuff to play. Maybe I just want to try it like this to start with. The red splash might not be necessary, even though I can support it pretty well, thanks to this environmental sciences out of the board. And playing like one mountain to go get with my emergent sequence or something like that. And the two Prismari campuses. Um, I think I'm just going to try it like this, though, to start with. I'll just use these in the late game to scry my way to victory. Yeah, let's try building it like this, shall we? Waterfall Areas is a card that I do want to try. What could I cut for that? And I think all my other cards are a little bit better than the Aerialist. Yeah, let's just build the deck like this. Let's just check our colors. A little bit heavier green, but not that much. And we do have some double blue cards, so I'm gonna cut one for us for an island. And we'll run it like that. I'll see you folks in the matches. Biff! Before I get to the matches, I want to give a huge shout out to all of the patrons who support me and my content at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas, and special thanks to those at the credits level. It is thanks to patrons that I'm able to steadily improve the quality of my videos and produce content on a consistent basis. Even just a couple bucks a month goes a long way, and there are a host of cool rewards you gain access to by becoming a patron. One perk of particular note is my card-by-card -card grade spreadsheet for Strixhaven, which will provide you with my up-to-date thoughts on every card in the set. If my content has provided you with some value, please consider supporting my work on Patreon because it really makes a big difference. Without further ado though, let's get to the matches. Welcome to round one. We have a good hand here. Turn two, we can get our emergent sequence going. Turn three, we can get our field trip going. Then on turn four, we can play our five mana four four. So we're gonna keep that. We can even go five mana four four plus mage duel, I believe. Okay, we even get to play this on turn one, nice. So now we have double blue. We are going to get an island with the emergent sequence because if we get the island, it lets us uh, get our forests with our field trips later because we have yeah, some cards can only get forests. So they killed our guy, but that's not a huge end of the world doomsday scenario or anything. We would have probably jammed the Zoomancy Professor. Demonic Tutor, I wonder how good their cards are to go get. Oh, that would have been a really good curve out situation. So on turn six, I can go this into Mage Duel, which is really powerful. This turn, though, I'm just going to play Zoomancy Professor. Because that blocks both of their creatures. Trade, trade. They probably got Mage Hunter. Depending on if they tap out or not, we could also just go Mage Duel, Mage Duel. What's this? So 
So they are gaining priority, but that's probably because they have this up. So in green, there are several combat tricks that they could have here. There's plus three, plus three. I'll still just fight with this guy because I'm going to lose combat if they have a combat trick anyway. I think this might be why they're getting priority. Beautiful. So this can create a 1-1 one, one pest token. I'm fine if they trade their pest for my pest. Okay, and this 4-4 can hold the back hold down the fort. Next turn I can ramp, play this, and then also start scrying with this soon. Mage duel doing good work here again. Wow, so that seems very aggro to me. Okay, so I can do this. They have the same two mana up that they did before. I'm going to fight with this guy. Okay, my guy still gets plus one, plus two. If they jump here, this thing gets a little bit bigger, but I'm still in okay shape if they do that. I'm going to get a island because I already have another forest here. Oh, and it comes into play untapped. Right, right. I forgot about that. That's good to remember. Read the cards. Be careful. I can double block here. What's this do? Mills cards. Exile four cards from a single graveyard to draw. This card to create a 1-1. One, one. So they can draw a card with it. I think I'm going to scry on my upkeep because I have a decent number of plays I could play. So they can't do anything now on their turn, presumably, unless they have a one drop. Um, I actually have a decent, some good draws. If I draw a frost trickster, I can win. So I still have four mana, which can cast almost every spell in my deck. Beautiful. They kept some mage duels in there for me. Thanks, bud. I don't think Black Green really has board wipes, per se. I'm not going to play around it. I think we got him. Sure. They can go up to four. We can just attack with everything. Beautiful. We'll just bounce this thing then. I should have scried on my upkeep again. That was a mistake. So they have to chump with a pest for all of my guys. They have to go chump, chump, chump.
I'll hold up one jump blocker. Just in case they have something. Not that I was going to attack it, it's just adding it in. And I can put a stop on my upkeep to scry. I'll scry on there instead of scry on there at my upkeep. So what cards have performed really well this game? The mage duels have been really good. The elemental summoning was pretty good to go get. This card would have been really good if they hadn't killed it immediately. This card looked really bad. Um, Mage Hunter would have been really annoying. The Sector kind of looked like it would have been scary on that board. Looks like they are done with the game. They can draw a card. Torrent Sculptor also seems like a reasonably just consistent 4 mana 4 4 in my deck. Got the win in round one. Pretty awesome stuff, I'd say. I was really happy with how the cards performed. I don't think we really need the red splash. I think being able to just scry in the late game is going to be really valuable. Um, I think getting those Zoomancy Professors is really good for us too, because we need to have some beef to use our fight spells with. Um, and so those were good. And the 4-4s four are really nice to have access to. This card was really good to pick up. Waterfall Aerialist might still be a good addition, um, but I don't know what I want to cut for it. So I'm just going to keep it like this for now. We're kind of just a beefy ramp mid rangey deck of cards. I think that Quandrix probably has a good matchup against Witherbloom, which is blue-green has a good matchup against black-green because I just go a little bit bigger than they do a lot of the time, and they have like these little pest synergies that I can just go over the top of. Um, probably the worst matchup would be... I don't know. I don't even know. This hand looks good. We'll see how the Bookworm performs. I was really excited to get the Bookworm, but maybe it's going to be worse than I uh, thought. So drawing a land is nice. We could even field trip for the uh, card that searches up a land if we want to, but I don't think we'll need to do that. Do they have a counter? Nope. I'm just going to get the summoning, I think. Get a five, get a four, four into play by turn four. Barag Befuddler. Okay, that'll be a good card to keep in mind during the format. We'll just play the card they know about. Frost Trickster, sure. So I don't want to give them the opportunity... Ooh, that's really good. To cast uh, Deal 4 and Copy. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to buy a Mathematician. And I'm going to Mage Duel. Hmm. Actually, I kind of want to use this. Because this can be used as like a cheaper effect a lot of the time. Oh, I, I punted it in terms of my mana tapping because I could have also mage dueled something else. I don't really think I care about these cards as much. They could have another Barag Befuddler, but I'm fine if they do, and if they don't, then this is really good for me. Okay. So I'm glad I blocked like that. Because I can really put the pressure on them now, thanks to Snow Day. Bookworm can be doing good stuff. There's no counter unless I pay one spell. I 
I'm going to play this so I can just jam Bookworm next turn. I'm going to Snow Day pre-combat on him. And then I can use my Fight Spell to kill their Elemental Summoning. So I can then do this, attack for four, play Bookworm. Perfect. Nice, Overgrown Arch is good. Gives me a lot of flexibility here. Bookworm is looking great here. So I can hit them for 10. That seems better to me. This way I can kill any threats that like are actually meaningful. I can sack this to learn right away if I want to. But I'll block the bird befuddler and we get the win. So far so good for our deck. Um, I'm not missing the cards. Let's see what performed well here. Subtraction didn't look that good. Um, Nasari would have been kind of scary. The Elemental Summonings have been really good, I think. Frost Trickster looks good. Befuddler, maybe not so much, though it would have been good against that one card. I liked Snow Day. That seemed good. Mage Duel once again performing. Field Trip looking great. Field Trip into Elemental Summoning is a really good combo. I really like that in the deck. Bum -ba -bum. Let's see. Oh, I think I need to turn on this. Oh, there we go. I don't think I turned on my 17 lands tracker. But, oh well. No worries. <laughs> I've been trying to maybe keep track of some more data of my uh, matches. Okay, so looking at this hand, it's a little bit slow. But we have this on turn three, and we're on the draw. If we draw a two-drop, we're in heaven. And we can activate our Burian books on turn three to put back an attacker. And then we have um, turn four Torrent Sculptor as a 5-5 five, five ward. So that's pretty good. I mean, turn, yeah, 5-5 five, five ward creature, but yeah. Perfect. We can put that thing back. And they're going to have a hard time targeting this and killing it. We have a 5-5. Five, five. They'll have to pay 4 life if they want to deal 4 to us. And that's where our Frost Trickster and our Mage Duel can really shine. And they can't really kill this. Not with the mana they have available, at least. The Ward 2 is a big game changer on that. I think next turn we're going to play Frost Trickster... Spectre offense, sure. Tapping down Spectre. And we'll start bashing them. That's the best way to beat an arrogant poet, is to hit them. Sure. So this thing brings a land and untap. So it essentially costs three, so that means next turn we can go this into Mage Duel. So currently we're going to Frost Trickster. Hmm... So maybe we want to play this so they have to keep paying life on that. Because otherwise they don't, have, they don't have to pay life on their arrogant poets. And then we can Frost Trickster plus Mage Duel next turn. 
Yeah, that's better. Also thins the deck slightly. If they do have removal, they're going to be able to hit me for six uncontested. Yeah. That's how it goes sometimes, though. They don't have to pay life at all. I was going to try and make them pay life. But as it is, we're in good shape here. Keep that guy tapped. Fight that guy. Play land, attack. Put a stop on my upkeep so I can scry. They can give it unblockable with their tunnel, but they're just dead if they do that. This is lethal now. Sure. So if I scry, I'll spend four mana. That means I'll have three mana left over. I think I'll just not scry this turn, maybe. I do have a decent number of good draws in the deck, and this way, if I don't scry, I have a lot of a lot more draws that would be good. Perfect. This is like one of the cards I was thinking of, because this way I can play my 4-4 four, four as well. What other cards do I have? I have Introduction to Spell Shaping. Prophecy, I mean. That would probably be the best elemental summoning. Let's make them either trade or do a double block or something. Now I have a lot of land, so I can scry on my upkeep and still cast like every spell in my deck. So they can kill me in two turns. But I've got some outs, potentially. I've got mage duels. But they'd have also have to spend all their mana and they're dead if they do that. I think I'm gonna block here. It just keeps me alive against them just activating this next turn. Bookworm. Hmm. I don't think I can keep it. If I'd drawn it naturally, it would have been real good. Gaining three life. But I think scrying is better, because if I hit a land, I basically lose here. So, because they can give this unblockable, this thing. So I have to kill them this turn. They don't have to block this, so I hit them for five. They chump there, and I'm dead. Real close. We were close. I'm sure they'll find the line. Very close game. Very close indeed. I think scrying is still good there because I can just outright win the game if I draw Mage Duel. And I have one. I have four Mage Duels in the deck, so I have three outs of just instantly winning. Because if I fight this elemental token against their Pledge Mage and then attack them, they only have one blocker and I have two lethal attackers. So 
I think it's definitely worth scrying for Mage Duel, um, especially because I also have other draws that could be okay. Um, like, what else would have been a good draw? I guess the two cards that I isolated myself from drawing were Bookworm and the six mana tap two creatures by making the play that I did. Uh, but I did give myself the odds of drawing one of my three mage duels. So I think I like gave myself more of a bonus than I hurt myself, I guess. I guess I still have. So if, if I just draw, I have five outs or I can get a scry and a draw at three outs. Maybe that doesn't work out very well for me. Let's see what else I had in my deck that maybe would have helped. Huh. Maybe I did the math wrong. Because I was thinking I was trying to scry for something relevant, but I guess I needed to find Mage Duel um, with the scry play that I made. Or Divide by Zero. That's another card that I could have found. So I, I guess the way it worked was I had... I had already used that card, I think. Fighting something else. No, I hadn't used the... Decisive denial yet, I don't think. Huh. So had I used the decisive? Let's just say I hadn't. I don't think I had. So let's just say I hadn't used decisive denial. And I had so I had that gave me one, four, five outs if I scry. So I have five outs if I spend the mana. Or I get these extra two outs if I don't scry. So I either have two shots at five outs or one shot at seven outs. I don't know exactly how the math works on that. But that's very interesting, just thinking about it. One shot at seven. Or two shots at five. I think two shots at five is probably better. Because that gives you... Not completely additive properties, but... Huh, yeah. It would have worked out better if I hadn't scribed, but I still think the play was correct. One shot at seven or two shot at five. Decent odds. And then they only won because they had the... I guess they could have maybe had a spell that they didn't need to cast, but that land ended up clutching it for them. Another close game. I think we... Uh, if they'd had to pay two more life for their poet... I think the one play where we... Um, we weren't able to double spell very often. And the one play where we played the cultivator and they killed us and hit us for six... That was a pretty uh, game-swinging play. Okay, we're back in it. Inept Mage. Yeah, that's one of my uh, Twitch subscribers, I think. Or at least one of my viewers. This is a good hand. Snow Day. We don't get to play this until a little bit later on, but we'll get to play this thing early. Always cool to face a viewer. And they're on a mulligan. Okay, dope. Put our campus down. Then play Drake and then play another campus. Ooh, the Burian books is good too. That works really well with Torrent Sculptor. Oh, that's annoying. So they essentially got a divination, but they drew a pretty inefficient spell. Um, that's a good little uh, card there. They are trading down on mana, but still not the best. I'm going to attack. The reason being is that I um, feel like they might just play a 5 mana spell this turn, and then this thing's unblockable anyway. They 
They might have a deal for or something. Okay, they didn't target the attacking creature. That makes sense. Sure thing. I can counter their counter spell if they have one. Not necessarily. Not if it's a cheap counter. I don't really want to fight this while they have mana up. But if they cast an expensive spell, I can counter it or fight then. Wow, Ward is clutch. Hmm. value here. Ooh, Bookworm. I don't think I can cast Bookworm or I won't need to this game, so I'm just going to scribe both to the bottom. And if they play two creatures, I snow day them. Probably gonna chump here. Yep, that's what I I kind of knew that they were gonna chump. And so what I wanted to do is now I just want to get it as wide as possible so I get a bunch of tokens into play, so I just have a lot of lethal threats so that this thing can win me the game next turn. Okay, I think we got him. You do have eight mana. There's some powerful spells in the format. Spectacle Mage, sure. I think the big play was this Decisive Denial. Getting to counter their bounce spell on our big guy. Torrent Sculptor's been a really good card, and I'm very glad I first picked it. Got the win. Let's see what cards performed better or worse than expected. This card was great. This card did a lot of work. This card seemed reasonable. I didn't love Pop Quiz. It kind of put them behind. Frost Trickster did good work. Field Trip. Field Trip has been excellent. I'm very glad that I rated that highly and prioritized it. We didn't even need a Mage Duel that game. Whew. Looking at our deck, let's see if there's any changes we want to make. So far, no. I've really liked Elemental Summoning. We even we haven't needed to use that yet, but we have used Introduction to Prophecy. I think picking this when we did was good because at the time we were considering splashing red, but then we got the Bookworm, which really gave us a top end. If we hadn't gotten Bookworm, I think having this would be nice. I think Waterfall Aerialist also didn't end up as good in our deck. 
but it's because we're more of a controlling version, so a 3-1 doesn't block super well. Same with Burrug Befuddler. But yeah, I think our deck is quite good, and I look forward to seeing you in the next matches. Welcome to round five. We are three and one. We've got a good hand here. Certainly going to keep it. I've really liked these campuses. The campi, as it is known in the plural. I don't actually know if that's the plural, but... It's really been quite nice to have them. Ooh, this is going to be great. So we can go land, emergent sequence. I think we want to get an island with it. Because, again, we have a bunch of copies of... What's the card called? Field trip, and that can only get a forest. So we don't want to run out of forests if by some strange chance we did. Also, next time we can jam Quandrix Cultivator. We are ramping up a storm here. So even though we don't get to attack, we don't want to attack in any way. We don't get to use the extra mana here, but we're still okay. Next turn, we're going to have access to six mana. That's pretty wild. Fortunately, we don't have anything to spend it on yet, but we'll find something. Also, we will maybe want it once we get up to eight lands. We don't want to hold lands so that our field trips can be better. Okay. Guiding voice. We're going to maybe want to mage duel that or bury it in books. I kind of like burying it in books because then they have to play it again. Clever Luminomancer. I do not think that card is good. And we are about to see why. Okay, so since they are essentially tapped out here, we're going to fight it this coming turn. No blocks. We take five. Five is a decent amount of damage, but now we get to have a big fight turn. So we can Mage Duel and play Biomathematician or just play Needle Thorn Drake. I think I like playing the Drake more and getting in for two damage. So I think we're going to fight with this. Again, Mage Duel has been fantastic. We don't want to bury in books this. This thing's basically useless. And then we'll play our land. Now we have the choice. Do we attack for two damage or do we play Needle Thorn Drake and play this guy? And, and just give out on two damage. My initial thought is that I'd rather... That damage doesn't really matter. I'm going to win the long game. But let's see. So if we play the Burian books this turn, we'll go three, four, five, six, seven. Next turn we can play this plus Needle Thorn Drake. And we'll use all of our mana again. Next turn we won't have the option of Burian books plus something else if we don't do it now. And this also adds more power to the board. Okay, I've convinced myself to do this. Though, to be fair... Oh, I totally forgot that this was a fractal. That's actually even better, because now this thing can attack next turn if I need to. I will say, also, I should have made that decision before I began the turn, because if I had used Mage Duel on this instead of this, it would have cost me some damage. Okay. So here we're seeing just how bad Lumamancer is right now. It's not just doing nothing. Stone Cold Blank. Oh, perfect. Land is excellent. Three, four, five, six, seven. So we can play Needle Form and Scry, so we can jam that extra or play Needle Form and... Yeah, we're just going to attack with everything here. That's a fine trade for us. Play this, and then we can scry. No, no, we can't scry. Oops. Um, I don't think we need to scry anyway. I think getting in for damage is even more useful. Okay, so what's this guy do? Discard to draw, reveal cards from the top. Reveal cards. Okay, so you get a random three drop for five mana. Okay. We are the beatdowns right now, so I think we want to just chip in for as much damage as we can. If they have a random one mana combat trick, like make your mark, we can bury in books. If they double block, we can bury in books.
And as always, we can just bury in books during combat. Let's get the 4-4, four, four, I think. And then we'll bury in books when they attack us. Or if they want to attack us. And if not, we can just jam this thing. So they get a 1-drop. So if we get rid of this thing, I think we can just do another attack. Four, five, six, seven. I think we do want to jam Bookworm this turn, though. So they're just jumping. Okay, that's a good draw. Even if they have a board sweeper, we can just put this uh, into our library again. Burying book something they have. Or just put this into library play elemental summoning. Sure. So, introduction to annihilation. They're going to get to exile my bookworm. And this gets a counter. Nice. I draw a card. I still have the win. I respect them for not conceding. Sometimes opponents will make a mistake. But not us. We'll let them eat this fractal. Feel like their Blarg is doing something. Okay. Really a good showing from our deck there. We did a lot of what we wanted to do. The turn 2 ramp was very good. We went turn 2 ramp, turn 3 ramp, and we just had a lot of mana to do whatever we needed. And we didn't run out of gas, which is another important thing, because with this sort of start, if we just draw a bunch of lands, we're in trouble. The two campuses that we had really make that less likely. Mage Duel was really good. Field Trip, being able to find a 5-drop creature was really good. Basically, the fact that um, we have the two copies of Elemental Summoning is really good for this deck, because the Field Trips ramp us into a good play. So we not only get the land, which is already getting a card, we then replace it with just a reasonable body which is only really overcosted by one because four mana four fours are just pretty good in general. So I think that that's a pretty key component of our deck is the fact that our field trips are also top end cards. So they provide two roles very well. So I think in Quandrix in particular, having um, the elemental token maker is actually very good. And one of the key cards you're looking for, it's so much worse to just like turn your wheels with our, your ramp spell like that. Cause we just get to immediately curve into it. Turn three, this turn four, play our four, four. Use that extra land right away. And I think that's pretty key. Um, also, the fact that we have some flexibility in the late game is nice. Because we can get other things. Like if we really need to find a mage duel, we can get the scry card. I think the annihilation thing has seemed a little bit clunky. But definitely useful. And uh, I think if we had to be able to fix our mana for red, then the access to the fixer would be nice too. So we have another match coming up. We're four and one. We're being very, very focused, and this is a great hand. We have a two drop. One of the things that's just an important lesson in general is that when you're an aggressive deck, you really need to prioritize two drops because missing a two drop is like the end of the world. When you're a more defensive deck, you can afford to miss a two drop. So you only need like four, I'd say, for your more defensive decks, and we have four. And that's pretty, pretty solid for us. So this will counter our deck a little bit because we have all ETBs here, but we can mage duel this away. Or they might just attack into us. Okay, so this is a perfect mage duel target, actually, because now it's got like a little bit of a buff on it. They could have plus two, plus two, and hexproof. But I was not going to play around that. Also, Death Touch works well with Mage Duel. And now our Frost Trickster and our Biomathematicians will actually trigger. 
pretty important, I'd say. So they're looking for a certain type of land, it looks like. Maybe either black or red. No, they missed. Okay, hitting a land there for us was huge because we can keep the pressure up. We just want to add the most stats that we can to the board. This is one of the reasons Zoomancy is so good is we get to add five, four worth of stats to the board. And uh, yeah, so we just want to spend all of our mana that turn because now we have the potential where if they do play like two threats, we could go divide by zero, zero plus mage duel or something like that. Um, so here, I kind of want to use Mage Duel while they're low on mana. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this, just so I can keep basically hitting land drops, and then I'm going to Mage Duel as well. And I'm going to get a Forest. We are not going to run out of the Forest this game. And then I'm going to Mage Duel... Because I don't want to, I want to be able to potentially double spell in the future, and hitting them for seven is no joke either, especially because I have divide by zero and frost trickster, which are both maximized when your opponent's on the back foot. So they could have some board sweeper, but I'm not going to start out by playing around it, and I do want to make sure I keep hitting land drops. That way, I can potentially double spell. Perfect. So we have another zoomancy here. So I think we want to start by Frost Trickstring, just get max pressure and tap this thing down. Because the 3-1 does actually trade decently well with our guy. Attack them for 5. And then we can divide by 0 their next blocker, and then just Alpha Strike. They can block this and take one two three four five so we have missed a little bit of land but it has not been the end of the world relic sloth so this is exactly how we planned it out we now get to bounce the relic sloth swing for the win And we have the lethal. They jump there. They take exactly five. It's important to note that we could have also, like, tried to cast the bounce spell the turn before. I'll show exactly what would have happened if we'd done that. If we, the reason, one of the reasons I wanted to get Frost Trickster out because it represents two damage this turn, which means we have lethal if we bounce a creature on this turn. So it was like a two-turn calculation for lethal, or they'd have to chump this. Either way, they were going to be dead in two turns if they play just one threat this turn. If we instead bounce the Silver Quill Pledge Mage and get a land so we can use our forest to get another land. We play that. Um, we still have Frost Trickster, but we don't have the extra two power in play, which means that we have one, two, six, seven. So we're going to hit them for five damage. So they'd still be at five, but then the next turn, if they play Pledge Mage and another creature, they have a good blocker on the Zoomancy. They have like a blocker for a ground creature, and we're not going to be able to kill them on this turn. Uh, we would tap this thing down, but then they maybe have another blocker, and we still only have three power, so they wouldn't die this turn. And that just gives them more outs to draw into potential uh, answers and things like that. So we were willing to miss out on the land drop from our uh, inability to go to our sideboard to go get the lesson that gets a land in order to play Frost Trickster, because the two damage is a key part of the card. It's not just about answering the threat, it's about adding power so you can kill them the following turn. I just wanted to take an extra moment to talk about that section of the game. Five and one. And the one game we did lose was nail-bitingly close. I really enjoyed the game that we lost, even though we did end up losing, because it felt like every decision really mattered, and we gave ourselves the best shot we could to win. And then that last decision on the scry was even really interesting on whether uh, it was correct or not. This is a pretty interesting hand, too. It's definitely a keep. You almost always keep both colors to, uh, like, early plays, and, like, like you'll, you'll have to keep this hand in limited. If you have a hand like this where it's three lands of four lands of both your colors and three spells and you can't keep it it usually means you constructed your deck a little bit off or you just have a really weird draw like if we had three eight drops in our deck maybe we did something wrong in order to have a hand that can't function so we can say hello to them they're being positive we'll be positive back so they're playing red white red white i think has a lot of but not issues. I will. I will. I won't say issues. I'll just say it's got some stuff where it potentially wants to do too many things. 
I get an island? Because it's got some controlling cards and some aggressive cards. So you really have to build the deck with purpose when you're drafting. You can't just put cards in your deck. Kind of like how in our deck we have the four mana three one ward flyer and we're not playing it. Um, because we just don't necessarily really need it for our deck to function. Um, and we're more just going to win with a big bookworm or torrent sculptor has been fantastic. Okay, so they've got a strict proctor. So we're going to get this guy into play, I think. We don't really just want to jam this because it doesn't trigger because of the strict proctor. So this is this card's a little bit annoying against us. It's a rare, so I'm not like gonna change the way I build my deck because of it, but the fact that all, a lot of our cards do trigger on enters the battlefield is kind of annoying. So we are gonna block there. They could have multiple combat tricks, but because this has death touch, it means it's not probably not gonna do much to stop us. And killing their flyer means we're gonna kill their other flyer too. God's willing, okay. So that's not a card I was gonna be playing around because it is like a mystical archive thing. Blood Age General, so we can at least block that. So we're not going to play Torrent Sculptor, it's just a 2-2 two, two on the ground. So I think we're just going to play this, divide by 0. And then we can block... Yeah, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to bounce this, get my lesson, and then block there. Because that potentially gets rid of more flying pressure that I'd have to deal with. What's this do? That's worrisome. I'm going to play this because it's harder to target and they're a little bit stuck on lands. So it's not as efficient as playing the elemental summoning. But I'm not going to be able to double spell next turn with the cards I have anyway. I can still double spell if I do both these. It doesn't. I don't get the tap ability from this necessarily. Well, I can't just let this hit me. They can pump it up. And we're trading rare for rare here. Oh, there's the Mathematician. I'm just going to play this card. I can tap the thing and pay the extra two. Same with this, I can pay the extra two. And they can pump it. Oh, they choose not to. Interesting. I'm going to pay two to tap this. I'm going to pay the extra two. This thing won't get these triggers and stuff, which is pretty annoying. I'm going to start sending. That's good for me. I think that's a good trade for me. Um, because those things make it really hard to block their flyer. They do have three cards in hand, three spells. I really want to get this thing off the board. So if I draw a Mage Duel, I'm in a really good spot, I'd say. Bury in books. Okay. So I have seven mana. I can't actually play by a mathematician and make the token and use burying books. Hmm. Do 
Do I want to trade two damage for one damage? Not really, because once I get this into play, it's going to all be over. We have two copies of this. So they should have played that pre-combat. This card's really good against me right here. Strict Proctor's actually done a lot of work, and the fact that I've had I haven't drawn any mage duels to kill it has really hosed me. And they've also had threats that I kind of have to kill instead. Okay, that's a big draw. It's just so rough that I don't get to draw cards and gain the life from it. I think I might just play this and then scry. I really want the three life. Oh no, but I can't pay the mana for the scrying. Yeah, I'm certainly in trouble. I'm taking four in the air every turn. Once I draw a land to jam... Once I can draw a mage duel, I can get rid of this strict proctor. That's good for me. I can still block there. And if I do draw a mage duel, I'm in okay shape. Professor of Zoomancy. Here I'm in an awkward spot. I think I'm in... I'm dead, potentially. What I need to have happen is I need to draw Mage Duel. Kill... So I go to one here. They have a combat trick? Yeah. Yeah. They have no idea how annoying this Strict Proctor... I mean, they probably do, because they saw me pay, like, 8 mana. This card's just good against my deck, and it's a rare, so I can't really play around it. I don't think I can win even if I jam this thing, because they're at a high life total, so I still have to take, like, 3 or 4 turns to kill them. Maybe I was supposed to bury in books this thing, but then this thing hits me, and they get to bring back creatures, which seems really bad, because I just can't deal with flyers right now. Maybe what I should have done is I cast a spell early in the game that, where is it? Exile? Divide by zero. If I had divided by zero on my turn... No, I did cast divide by zero, didn't I? I bounced this. No, they gave it God's Willing. No, they gave something else God's willing. Basically, I maybe needed to use my interaction on the 1-3 so I could jam this. That was a tough game. Maybe I'll have to watch that back later and see what I could have done differently. That that tax was just so much, though. The extra 2 mana every time I did anything. Because I do want to get the value from my cards. But maybe I just had to, like, play my card out and then leave up the mana so I could scry for an answer. So, definitely a potential misstep. Okay, this is a really good hand. Again, we're ramping into maybe a turn three Professor of Zoomancy. I like Snow Day a lot. I wish there was a way to look at the flavor text of the... Oh, there is. Okay.
this card is quite good. But we answered very effectively with Professor of Zoomancy. Because we have two blockers to deal with the menace. Certainly jamming this. It deals with both threats very well. If they just attack with this, we block with the token. If they attack with both, we double block this guy. And then we have next turn play Quandrix Tab to play the Kelpie Guide. And then the turn after that, we can play Snow Day. So our hand is really lining up well. Sure. This can trade there. We now have even more blockers for the Ink Duelist. I'll just single block. There is the black spell that gives a plus one plus one counter, so maybe I was supposed to double block. Yeah, in retrospect, I think I punted that. Yeah. There's no reason not to double block, because they can't kill me more than I'm already dead anyway. Yeah, I think I just punted the game. I knew that was a card, too. That was bad. Real bad. Ugh. Oh. Though, in that case, they just give it indestructible. So, they basically still have the creature. It would just be a 3-4. Which is still bad for me. I'm going to play this. And I want to tap down these two. I'm going to play this land untapped. I'm going to tap down this thing. And the 3-1. Actually. This thing for sure. And the 3-1 I think. Those are both good. I think I can get rid of the Quandrix campus. Okay, so my turn. Okay, so I can Biomathematician to make this a 3-3 and then have it fight Killian Ink Duelist. They have 5 mana up, so they could have a removal spell or something. But I think all of my turns here start with this card. To grow the forest. Then I play this. Followed by Field Trip. I take the damage. And I get... Uh, elemental Summoning. Then I go to Combat. And I pass. I have five, six, seven, eight lands, so this thing can tap something down. Sure. Do I want to kill their 2-1? Probably not. Okay, that's good to know about. So I can just keep tapping that thing down. I can kill their Killian Ink Duelist. Do I gain a life? No, I just lose a life. 
So I think I want to fight the Killian. Untap, play this. This is where this being a 4-5 instead of a 3-4 is really bad for me. So I don't even have to do that on my turn, so this resolves. Tap that down. Untap. Draw. Play my 4-4. Four, four. Go to combat. Attack for five. Maybe I just want to attack with the land. Hold this guy to block there. So what are my blocks right now? I go block there. I go double block on that guy. Double block. I can also fight something. I can kill one of their smaller things. I don't think I want to use my removal on Killian. I'm gonna attack with just three damage. Play my land. Pass. I can tap down the Cogwork Archivist. Free combat. I do want to pressure them so that the Arrogant Poet is worse. So I can counter that, or I can fight this. This thing's going to gain flying. Okay, so let's see if I can kill them here. Always look for lethal, as the saying goes. Oh, okay, let's get rid of this for now. I have a timeout, so I'm chilling. So they're going to go to 12. They're going to go to 12. They're going to go to 10. I'm going to go to 9, 7, 4, 3 when I cast this. If I... Fight this guy, they go to back to 14, and then I tap this, and I have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 11. So I don't think I counter this. I'm basically dead next turn. If I don't counter this, I'm going to counter it. I think I have to. Because this way, I only lose if they top deck another non-creature spell. Because this thing gets to block, which is a problem. And I can tap down one of their guys. I should have scryed. Because now they're in maybe some trouble. I tap down Fledge Mage. I play this. Put a stop on my upkeep in there. End step. So if I, if, I, if I count on them not having a spell, I can tap Mage Hunter, attack with some things. But I think I can just give myself a scry to draw, just find a Mage Duel. If the game stalls out, I'm scrying every turn, and they aren't. 
And I have more mana. Needlethorn Drake is really good there. Kelpie Guide is doing good work too. So this can trade here. I can tap this again. Not double blocking this is going to cost me this game as well, or could potentially cost me the game. Ouch. That's really good. So I'm just dead now. That was tough. Um, I could have taken a sharper line on that one turn if I had let this spell resolve um, and then like fought the Killian and I was only three damage off. So this game was closer than this life total thing would dictate, I think. They found the Mage Hunters thing at a good time too. That would have been pretty good to help them push through. But also I messed up against the Mage Hunter. If they hadn't had a four extra four or five, I could have gotten in some chip damage with my four four. That could have maybe made a difference as well. So overall, um, that was not played perfectly. I played most of that game pretty well. And I also realized my mistake against the Mage Hunter before they even cast their spell. So uh, I'm actually okay with how I played that in the aggregate. Um, also, Flyers were rough for my deck. I didn't have as good of an answer against Flyers as I would have liked. Uh, maybe that means I was supposed to play Big Play or something like that to give me extra reach. I definitely would have sideboarded it in if I had known... Uh, that they, if I had been playing sideboard games. But overall, my first impression of Strixhaven is very positive. I've got to play a lot of really close matches. It felt like my decisions mattered, which is always important. And uh, the games that I did lose were very close. I lost that first one where they got to one life. I lost that one where, the cal according to my calculations, they were going to live at like three if I alpha strike them that one turn. So it was actually closer than it looked. Um, and then the only other game that I lost was to that one rare that just really shut down my deck while they were beating me down in the air. So other than that, really cool deck. I really liked the way the cards performed. Mage Duel was in particular very good. I always wanted to draw it, and I was really glad that I had four copies of it. Um, other cards that I didn't get to draw my Overgrown Arch, so I can't really say about that one. Kelpie Guide was really good in that game. Frost Trickster performed well. Divide by Zero felt great every time I cast it. Bookworm was good. Snow Day felt excellent. I really liked casting that. Torrent Sculptor, definitely worth first picking. I uh, definitely think it was good. Quandric Cultivator was good. Zoomancy really performed. A lot of stats. Um, Burian Books was pretty solid. And then Biomathematician. Biomathematician underperformed a little bit, but that was mostly because I think I drew it in games where they had the card that made me pay two extra for it. So it's obviously not that good if it costs five. Um, but it was all... I, and I also didn't like have... I mean, it, it definitely is a lot of stats, and I think the card is still good. But I definitely, it def definitely didn't perform as well as some of these other cards because it didn't come up for the best situation. Emergent Sequence was excellent as well. Giving me a creature and a land was nice. Even when they killed it, it didn't feel bad. And Denial did well. So pretty much all the cards in our deck we got to see. Needle Thorn Drake was pretty solid. Quandrix Campus definitely was nice. Um, we didn't get to use this lesson at all. I think it would have been better if we were splashing. But other than that, I don't foresee using this one all that much. But this lesson was really, really good out of the board. I really was glad we had that. Um, maybe I was supposed to play this guy, I'm not sure. Or maybe I was supposed to play this as a reach creature. That's something interesting to think about. I didn't even think about this having reach, but that could have addressed a weakness of the deck. So maybe I was supposed to sideboard this in, uh, like not, not between games against the same opponent, but like play one copy of this to help me against those flyers. I do have two of these, but I think a little bit of extra help against flyers could have gone a decent way in those games. 
And yeah, overall, really excited to keep diving on into Strixhaven. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you were watching this on YouTube, which is the only place you could have been watching it, remember to hit that thumbs up button. Uh, it is free to do so, and it helps the video get seen by more people. Subscribe to the channel to catch more Strixhaven content, and click that bell icon so you get notified when I post future videos. You can also check out my Strixhaven draft guide linked in the description and pinned comment down below. Um, you can check out the Twitch stream live when I am streaming at twitch.tv slash Nikolai Bolas. You can find the Nikolai Bolas Discord server and my articles linked in the description and pinned comment down below as well. And if you um, would like to support my content and gain access to my Strixhaven card by card grade spreadsheet, you can check out the Patreon to support my work over at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. I do appreciate everyone who made it all the way till the end of the video. If you did, as a little bit of a secret something, in the comment section down below, leave hashtag Oh, uh, man. What's a good hashtag for the end of such an epic video? Ooh, I'm trying to think. We had a really good ramp sequence, so... Hmm. Hashtag, my calculations are correct, because we had some really precise games, and this is Quandrix, so they're a math college. So hashtag, my calculations are correct. I really do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want a shorter hashtag, you can come up with your own to let me know you made it all the way till the end of the video. But I just like leaving that little bonus for those folks that watch all the way to the end. That is going to do it for this video. I'm really excited to keep exploring Strixhaven with all of you, and I will talk to you next time.